Today's teens are completely immersed in technology. While the internet, cell phones, and television provide many benefits, they can also be unhealthy and dangerous. A recent study found the average 8 to 18-year-old spends more than 7.5 hours a day, 7 days a week using media. That's over 53 hours a week, more time than adults spend at their full-time jobs. Few parents set rules for how much time is allowed using technology, so the question must be asked, how much is too much? The first thing that must be discussed is the impact of technology on health. Sleep, attention, and school performance are all affected by exposure to too much technology. Teens tend to snack while watching TV, and the ads they see encourage eating unhealthy foods. Combine this with the hours of an activity, and obesity becomes a huge problem. Teens have access to a lot of technology, and it's fun to learn on the computer, but they need to police themselves on how much time they spend in front of those things. They do need to be active and stay active and go outside and take a break from that. I can think of some problems that technology can cause with physical health, but also technology could cause some problems with mental health. And the other problem we're faced is that we don't know what some of the effects will be 5, 10, 20 years from now. So we're sort of learning as we go along. The main message is too much of anything can be unhealthy. Other areas that are affected by exposure to too much technology include problems maintaining focus, harm from viewing sexual or violent content, loss of social skills, and no time to spend with family. Different types of technology definitely affect family time because there's so many different things such as TV, the internet, and of course texting. I think with our family we don't allow generally TV at dinner time. So that's our family time, so it doesn't affect it too much there, nor do we allow texting at the dinner table. I think family time is being affected by teens using technology because you're either too busy watching TV, on Facebook, or texting. I feel like family time is, is affected by teens using different types of technology because they place a greater importance on, on texting their friends and uh, being on social sites on the internet rather than sitting down to dinner together and um, you know things like going outside and throwing a ball. Family time is affected in my family by if my mom is talking to me I'm usually distracted by the TV or my cell phone. The effects on academic performance must be looked at as well. 50% of teens use some type of media while doing homework. This multitasking damages productivity of the quality of work. Sometimes she has the TV on when she's doing homework and sometimes she's texting when she's doing homework and I'm not sure but I can't imagine that that helps. Teens with heavy media use also report getting lower grades. About half of these teens say they usually get C's or lower on their report cards. I think my child's uh, academic suffer because of the time she spends uh, on the internet and texting her friends. Uh, I think she doesn't really take the time to do her homework and whatnot the way she should be doing it. Well I recently just deleted my Facebook and um, I got to where I would just you know kill some time on Facebook instead of doing homework and um, looking at people's pictures and profiles to keep up with them without actually ever interacting with them or giving them a call. I figured um, it was actually an almost unhealthy thing. I didn't feel good about, you know, just spending time on Facebook. Another issue is that the quickness of writing and the abbreviations teens use for chatting are leading to diminished spelling and writing skills. I've noticed some issues with writing every year at the beginning of the year. Whenever I go over essay writing, I make sure that I do a lesson on audience and making sure that you understand that when you're writing an essay that you don't use the same language that you use when you're texting. Um, but at the same time, I think there's something about texting that has really been a benefit to you guys uh, in your generation. This whole idea that you're using communication in order to communicate um, verbally and through the written language is something that's really beneficial. I have noticed diminished skills in writing in students. Um, an example would be uh, the students will use the number four um, instead of F-O-R. In addition to that, they use the number two instead of T-O or T-O-O. -O. And um, then they also use the letter U instead of Y-O-U in their writing. And unfortunately, that just is not appropriate for standardized essay writing. 
74% of 7th through 12th graders maintain a social network site such as Facebook. These sites make it quick and easy to post pictures, videos, thoughts, and conversations. The problems start when teens don't filter what they post. Personal or identifying information can open these teens up to attention from predators. Also, what they post now may end up hurting them later. Future employers, colleges, and others may be turned off by what has been posted in the past. Yes, we do look at social networking sites before hiring employees or placing volunteers. You can learn a lot about people by how they portray themselves on the World Wide Web. I do not worry about what I post on Facebook because I don't post bad things or anything, but I do know that if I do, in the future there may be a time when I go to get a job or something and they want to look it up, me up on my Facebook. So I do watch what I put on there. The social networking sites, I think, show a lot about a person's true personality and their behavior. Um, I think when people go for a, an interview or you know try to find a job, they're probably at their very best and not very vulnerable. And when you have a social networking site, they're not expecting for that prospective employer to look at that. So they're very honest and open and probably to a fault where they shouldn't be. So I think that in some positions it would be beneficial, but you know, if I was looking for a really good job, I would not have a social networking site that exposed too much of myself. I know for a fact that Facebook with teenagers can come back to harm them. I've seen it just turn into a gossip ring where girls are talking about the other girls and the guys are talking about the other guys and girls talking about guys and it's not really being effectively used just to keep in touch with people and it can be used to harm people. So that's something to just to be careful of. The final thing we must look at is one of the most deadly. Using cell phones while driving is a huge problem today. Teen stay texting is the number one driving distraction. This type of distraction kills over 6,000 Americans each year. And listen to this startling fact. For every six seconds of drive time, texting takes 4.6 of the seconds away. That's 4.6 seconds a teen's driver's eyes are off the road. Maybe this explains why teen drivers are four times more likely than adults to get into a car crash while using a cell phone. A study by the University of Utah has shown that a person who's talking on the cell phone is just as dangerous on the road as a person who is legally drunk. And then a person who is texting goes up from there. So the more that your attention is captured by what you're doing on the cell phone, the more likely it is that you're going to cause an accident that either hurts you or somebody else or even results in death. Technology can be an amazing thing. There are wonderful educational programs on TV and today's teens can be creative and productive producing their own media. Social sites can help teens who are lonely get social interaction during adolescence. Now with all this technology, a lot of people who are young are finding that they can share their opinions. If they were shy, they can actually have these conversations and that I think can be very helpful because it's an avenue to say, I'm important, I believe in something, and I want to share you with you, and, and do you agree with me or not? And you can have a conversation, and this is very helpful, where technology has brought something that we didn't have in the past. These sites also help families stay in touch over long distances and give teens something they feel they don't have a lot of, control. Parents are the key to helping teens handle technology. By setting limits and rules and talking about what is seen and heard, today's teens can learn the benefits of technology without falling victim to the many dangers. Sarah Lauren Brown, TSC News.